Yo, this is the tunnel place. Pokemon Moon. So, we have already beaten the grand trial of Pony Island thanks to fighting as Hapu. But, we're not done yet. We're gonna head off to the Altar of the Moon. To go that, you have to go through a very large place here with a lot of trainers, so be ready for Vast Pony Canyon. Let's go inside. This place has a lot of trainers, not kidding. This Probably like almost 15, 16 trainers here, so we'll probably spend this whole episode just fighting trainers. And this guy here is the first one. Trainers and Pokemon should be free. Freedom is good. Yeah, but what kind of freedom are you talking about then? We'll see. Veteran Harry, he has two Pokemon. And the first one of these will be Torkoal. Torkoal, a Pokemon from Generation 3. He was the guy who was also the, the Pokemon used by the, uh, the third gym as well. So he's a pure fire type Pokemon. He's not a rock type, even though he has a hard shell. So he's not weak to fighting as a uh, my cargo is. Still did some damage to him though. Heat wave will not hit. Be warned though that there is a. Um Actually, let's just do all that pummeling. He does have Sunday Day activated, if the draw that means Sunday is always active. And Sunday Day means his fire attacks will deal more damage. But just to be sure, since he's a bit of a tanky Pokemon, let's just use our Z power and take care of him immediately with all out pummeling. Hopefully, it should be enough. But this guy has a 1 on 1 more Pokemon, so he might have to be ready for that as well. Our pummeling is used, will it be enough to kill it? No, it will not. Heat Wave. You damage, but so far we're doing good. One more brick break should do it. And it's enough. Torco goes down. Okay, so because of the uh, sun Sunday Day being active, water Pokemon not really good to use against fire types here because water doesn't do a lot of damage against Sunday Day. So it's better to use something else that can deal good damage that are still weak to them. In my opinion, you should use a ground attack. Let's get him Marowak, who's also fire type, which means he's a resistant to the fire attacks given to him. Here comes Marowak. Where is the Arcanine? So Arcanine is generation 1 Pokemon. It's intimidates, which means my attack power will go up a bit down, so my bone and meringue will do a bit less damage. Here it comes. Fire Fang first. Not very effective, because I'm a fire type. Bone and will hitting once. And twice. Pretty good damage. But we can do more. Mark now with another Fire Fang on Marowak. Here comes the first bottom rank, hitting once. And twice. Nice. One more bottom rank should do it. Sunlight goes that way, that means the Fire Fang from Arcanine will now deal less damage. Let's see how much damage will do now. Yeah, not that much. Curse body, which means fire fang cannot be nothing used. Here comes the bone rank. Only one hit should be enough, and it does. Arcanine goes down. Well played, Marwak. And this battle is over. Hariyama is level 45. Good stuff. Be as free as you can be. You guys sounds a bit like the uh, team uh, team skull guys. Or was it team, not Team Skull, was it? No, not Team Skull, Team Plasma was it, yeah. Team Plasma in Generation 5 had the same thing. That was the bad guy team in Generation 5. They want to liberate Pokemon from trainers. But of course, that was just a joke, I would say. More trainers here, but this also place has some rocks. Let's go on to our beloved Pokemon here. One Pokemon can also carry here, so you might put up a repel. We have the Alolan Dog Trio, the ground and steel dual type. Level 44, which is very high for a wild Pokemon. You do one Brick Brick though, should be in very funny. Iron Head, steel type move. Versus the Brick Brick. And Dog Trio is known for very being squishy, low health, and these very low defense. So Brick Brick will just take care of that pretty quickly. Climb under here to find an item. 
My name is Elixir. Very important item to have when you are traveling these caves because there might be times where you go out of PP on your Pokemon and that's gonna be bad because then you can't use moves. So Elixir is good because Elixir restores all PP, I mean all moves PP by 10. So the general should be good enough to use. Golbat, not interested in you Golbat, I'm sorry. But what Pokemon are pretty tough though, they are pretty over in the 40s so that's pretty high. Let's see, where is our repel? We have a regular repel. I guess we just use those. Let's use the Taurus charge and crush these rocks. There we go. And max potion, very important to have later on. I don't even need to use it now because it's we're getting a bit low on the uh, Away from these people. There we go. So as you can see here, there's a path in the north which we can't reach. But we need to use the uh, matchup thing to get the matchup thing to get there. Can do out outside as well. Yeah, this place is so big that there's basically trainers both outside and inside the actual canyon. Let's grab a revive. Should be very important for us as we move on. Now we're above the canyon, as you can see. This place is very big. Very, very big. This is one of the biggest dungeons, I think, in this game. Considering there's a lot of trainers, you have to do a lot of use of different Pokemon. Here we have these uh, steep cliffs, the rocks parts. So you have to fight this trainer if you don't go through with Mudsdale. If you climb mountains, there's so much you need to know about them. The Pokemon that live there are the trainers you'll meet. Probably. So we're going to face off against the hiker Zachary. He has two Pokemon. The first one of these will be Archeops. Ooh, interesting. So Archeops is Generation 5 Pokemon, a very powerful Pokemon, but it has a big weakness. Archeops has an ability called uh, Defeatist. Which means when Archeops goes below 50% health, the damage it does will be halved. Above that though, it's fast and it does massive damage. But it's not that, it's a bit squishy though. So as long as you can just get it faster. Endeavor, a move that does more damage the lower health you have. Archeops will go down. It's a rock flying dual type. Next up is Rampardos. Rampardos, a uh, rock type from Generation 4. This is one of the two fossil Pokemon you can recover there. It's uh, either Rampardos or Bastidon. And that's, of course, its pre evolutions. But unlike other rock type Pokemon, Rampardos is actually very weak when it comes to defense. It's more about uh, speed and offensive power. Prima up in level, and we win this one. I went to the top, and you're the top, so that's pretty similar. I guess you could say that in one way. Go outside again. A pot arrive, you can climb under, what we find here. Keep some items. Steep parts here, and not a trainer. I like Pokemon, I like battling, I like losing moves, and I love winning. Well, I'm glad you liked all these things, except the last one, though. We'll do something about that. Against Veteran Lin. She has three Pokémon. The first one of these will be Starmie. Wow. Starmie from Generation 1. Dual-type Water and Psychic. Not good for Hariyama to face, because Hariyama... His only move, the Brick Break, doesn't really do any good damage against a Psychic type. So you need a little change here. Let's bring in Magnezone. Magnezone is resistant to Psychic and does pretty heavy damage to the water types. Here comes the Brine. Brine is a water move that does more damage if you're low health. Start to use Psychic. Not very effective against a Steel type. Here comes Discharge. 
This is actually the first time we used uh, uh, Magnet Zone now after we evolved after the battle we had. So you can evolve uh, Magnet Town to the Magnet Zone. And you can also evolve Charger Bug as well here when you are near these electrical fields. Marowak and Shellgun goes up in level. Shellgun is almost in the 40s now, so it's basically soon ready to be used. Talonflame, Generation 6 Pokemon, Fire Flying Dual type. So if you have a rock move, that's going to be a one hit KO for sure. Let's bring in our dear water friend, Primarina. Do not use any fairy type moves against Talonflame because fire types are resistant to fairy. But it's water that I'm after, so let's use that. Acrobatics. Acrobatics is a flying move that does double the damage, I think, if the Pokemon is if, if the Pokemon is not holding an item. We land the sparkling area, we take it down in a single hit. And that's what will be Shinotic. Shinotic Generation 7 Pokemon, new one. This is a grass type. Let's bring in two cannon for this one. So this is a dual type grass and fairy type. Grass and fairy. So this means if you have a poison Pokemon, this one can deal quadruple damage. Poison is really effective against the Shinotic. But so is the flying type. That's four times so, but still double the effectiveness. Ingrain to recover health every turn. Got the big blast. That's a one hit KO. But if you do have a fire poison type Pokemon, you should probably use that against Shinotic and it will go down in a single turn regardless, more or less. And we win. I lost, but my Pokemon that lost are adorable. I guess she win I guess she loses with style. Not only she doesn't know a poor loser like my others. Escape rope, which is a nice item to have to get her away from these places. We can't get past her without using Mudstead Gallop, so let's use it. Another trainer here. We can't go past, we have to fight. A strong trainer can tell the strength of his of her opponent at a glance. Um, I guess. What does she have? It's Ace Trainer Junko. She has two Pokemon and the first one of these. That will be Lilligant. Not a grass type, but this is a pure grass type from Generation 5. Versus Hariyama. Hariyama's already in a bit of a trouble, so I probably have to switch him out or I'm probably gonna get KO'd. Let's bring in Toucan again. Because Toucan does really great against grass types. Also, it's Marowak here, but I'd rather use uh, this one. I call the Teeter Dance, which will cause confusion. Let's go with the Beak Blast. Charging up. Again, with the Quiver Dance. Next. Which will increase its special attack and special defense as well as speed. What will two cannon do? Two cannon will Beak Blast this one. That's a one hit KO. Well played. Two cannon, you fought off against the confusion and you land the big hit. Hariyama 46 wants to learn close combat. Mm -mm, that's a nice move. It's one of the most damaging fighting moves in the game. But use it at your uh, behest because it will reduce defense and special defense one stage every time you use it once. I'll keep sand attack because it's good against legendary Pokemon. And focus energy. Yeah, it's good for Hariyama because Hariyama is a tanky Pokemon, but I'll still go close combat. It's just better to use it when you need to just burst someone down quickly. Next up is Weevil. Oh, wow. Speaking of uh, fighting types, now we're gonna send Hariyama in, even though he's low health. Because Weevil is the evolved form of Sneasel. It's a dual type Dark and Ice. What's the problem with that? Dark and Ice are both weak to fighting. So we will, if he gets a fighting hit in his face, it's gonna go down very quickly. Let me snatch. Cause the brick break though, so that won't really matter for him. That's a one hit KO on the we will. It's just so weak to the fighting types. 
What amazing Pokemon! Truly, I must admit my defeat. Yeah, I guess you have to. There we go. Uh, I need to recover my Pokemon a bit now, because I feel like we're taking a bit too many hits here. And there's still a lot more trainers to fight, so we might as well just be ready for whatever's going to come in our way. Potion's good for her, but remember High Potion was reduced in Generation 7. It only recovers 120 health now instead of 200 like it had been doing all generations previous to this. I think it's fine though, because I think the jump from Super Potion to High Potion was just too big. Those also buffed Super Potion to, to restore uh, 60 HP instead of uh, 50. Team 99, Dazzling Gleam. This is one of the, one of the best special attacks of Fairy types. Not as good as Moonblast, though Moonblast is, in my opinion, the best one. But it's a very good move regardless, though. It's a good fairy move, and it's going to be very useful for a uh, for an event that's going to come up very soon. So you might want to get your hands on it. Especially if you don't have a fairy type, and maybe you have someone that can still learn Dust and Gleam. It's going to be very, very useful for you, I promise you. Phew! This can is truly a difficult path to walk! You even make a vast pony can seem like nothing at all, Satana. But you know what? I overcome my fears enough to cross even a high bridge like this one. Have you? I'm not going to be afraid of heights anymore. Next time I should be even able to tackle that bridge on Mahalo Trail. Watch this. This is my trial. Ha. <laughs> she is confident, at least. Remember last time she w went across her bridge, though, in the beginning of the game? That really go well, did it? It went really bad. So... Uh-oh. Murkrows. They don't look very friendly. What will you do, Lily? Will you go, or will you... No, she's confident. She must do this. She runs. Murkrow comes in. What will you do? Maybe you should capture one. There's two from behind as well. She's surrounded by Murkrows. Come on, Lily. She runs right across from them. And she goes past. Oh! Satano, I did it! I made it a way across! I cleared my trial! This is Murkrows with his friendlies. That's good, though. I completed my first trial. Amazing, right, Satano? Yeah. <laughs> Hariyama, do you want the rest, too? Ah, oh, how nice of her. She heals up her Pokemon. Don't worry, I got you covered. I have a potion to revive and even lots of eaters, too. Though I'm not sure I've run out of max repels for a path like this one. But it's really thanks to you, Zitano. You're the reason why I come so far. Do I think I'll take a little rest here? I'm afraid my legs are still shaking. Yes, you can say. Anyway, next episode we're going to continue up here inside the Vast Pony Canyon. There's still a lot more trainers to fight. And something else to occur after this one. So, it's going to be some more interesting things to happen. But stay tuned, guys. More battling are coming, more leveling up, and more epic things to come. As we get closer and closer to the Altar of the Moon, where some cool story events will occur. Like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on social media. That's quite for now. I'll see you guys next time as my journey in Pokemon Moon continues.